creatives, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela, I'm a graphic designer and an illustrator. And today we're going to be diving in to Adobe Illustrator on the desktop version. I will get back to the iPad, I promise, but there are some things I wanna show you guys, fun type techniques that you can do for posters and for like social media if you want to, if you wanna do like a little template. This would be fun to try. This is mostly things that you have probably seen throughout social media, especially even on merchandise too. If you guys like these types of Illustrator videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I know we have a lot of new subscribers here. We are so close to 400 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. I think we may even hit 400 subscribers by the time this video goes live. Let's go ahead and dive into Adobe Illustrator. We have this entire massive artboard right here. This is what I have created. This is where I started. And if you follow me, this is where I ended up. So there is lots of different techniques here. There's gradients, there's there's some fun things that we could try, like these two up here. I was just playing around. So come on over here and I'm going to do a new artboard over here. So if you guys don't know, there is an artboard tool over here on the left toolbar. You can press whatever shortcut comes up on your computer. Mine is different, mine is Shift O. And you can come up here to the top toolbar next to artboard. It usually says custom and you can select a preset. I don't know if my program is going to showcase this to you, but I typically choose a HD 1080. Now, the way I began doing these was that I created a little blend element here. Let's go onto this artboard and you can do this however you wish. I went through and picked quite a few swatches using the color guide, it's a very helpful tool. I wanted some fall colors, so I went and I chose just a random fall color, burnt gold or like a bronzy gold, if you will, and I thought it was a really nice color. So I ended up choosing this and I chose a few options from the color guide selections that were here. You can also customize your own colors by all means. I encourage you guys to do so, and that's how I found all of these swatches. Let's start with a circle. I'm gonna hold down shift, click and drag, and I made a fully uniformly constrained circle. I'm gonna just control or command C, control command F, which is copy and paste in place. I'm gonna move it all the way over here. This one I chose more of like an orangey type color, like a burnt sienna, if you will, for all my art majors out there. I'm gonna select both of these options by holding down shift and clicking both. I'm going to object, blend, make. Mine does have a shortcut for that, but we're gonna go into blend options, which is under object, blend, blend options. I know you may not be able to see those on my screen because of my program. Choose smooth color in the blend options toolbar. And I'm gonna hit okay. We have our blend. I'm just gonna move that off to the side. Choose the text tool, just click anywhere. And of course, lorem ipsum pops up. It always does. I'm gonna do an A, because <laughs> I did this with A. I'm gonna go to my character toolbar here, and let's choose a font, not that. It was a script font. There it is, Astria Italic. So that's the one I ended up choosing for this option. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger for you guys. What I did with this is I went into my swatches panel. You can make your own swatch patterns, which are really cool. There's multiple ways to do it. One way to do it is just to take this blend object that we created earlier and then just drag and drop it into the swatches panel and it creates a new swatch for you to use. So I'm going to select this A, select that new swatch we just created, and it makes a really nice and cute pattern here for the A. Control C, Control F, or Command C, Command F, if you're on Mac. I'm gonna pull this all the way down straight, holding down Shift, and holding down Shift and Alt, or Shift, I think, an Option on Mac. Correct me if I'm wrong. To decrease the size of that one quite a bit. I'm gonna select both by holding down Shift and clicking on both. Object, Blend, and Make. And it makes this really nice, cute line. Now, the way to make this a little bit different 
is to go into Object, Blend, Blend Options, and then Specified Steps. And the Specified Steps, I think I'm going to do, did I do 10? Let's try 12. Now this is just the number of copies it provides all the way down to the other shape. Select OK for that. That is what we end up with. Now since this is still a text, if you go to the Layers panel over here, press this arrow to expand the layer. It will show you that these are still text layers. That's what that little A indicator is. So these are still text layers. You can still change it. So for instance, if you wanted this to be an M, it can change to M. If you want this to be a B, you can change it to B or literally any letter you want. C is quite cute and it'll transform. You can also do it to the one at the bottom as well, but I'm going to keep it back to A. If you want to make this a little bit more special, a little bit more different, select the bottom A down here by choosing your white direct selection tool or the direct selection tool, select it, press V on your keyboard or the selection tool and you can rotate it in any direction you want or select this entire thing, go to effect, distort and transform and go to twist. Now you may not have been able to see that, but the options are all there for you. With twist, you can choose the angle yourself or you can increase or decrease it however you wish to kind of like morph this A into something else. I'm gonna do it this way because this looks really cool. You can kind of vortex it in a way. It's quite fascinating. White direct selection tool or the direct selection tool, give it a stroke color. Go into our properties panel and let's see about giving this a stroke color. Give it this dark color. Increase our stroke. I have mine in inches. You can have yours in pixels or points. Uh, maybe 0.03. That looks quite cool. In the layers panel as well, if you select the top letter in the sequence with the direct selection tool, it appears in your layers panel right over here. You can easily just drag and drop it and it'll appear on the top. So you can see how that changed that. And that's kind of like how I ended up getting this. I did end up choosing the top A and changing the color of it. So let's try that. Copy and paste it on top. I took it outside of the blend so that it's just sitting on the top. Apply the twist. And instead of having that blend effect for the swatch that we had earlier, I chose like a nice hot pink to start off with. Why? I don't know. Just for fun. You can choose any other color you would like, like the dark colors. Ooh, that one's cool. I'm gonna start off with that. And you can make something really quite fun. Over here, I also put a gradient background. I think it was 8x10, 8x10 page behind it. You don't have to if you don't want to. You can just draw a square. And then up here in the top toolbar, there is the transform option and the transform option. Um, you can select that. Go under width and type in your specified dimensions and that'll be there for you. And you have this like really cool effect. Now you can create this in any way, shape or form that you wish. Let's switch up this gradient a little bit. And my gradient options down here. Let's see about taking this one away and replacing it with that. There we go. That way you can make it out a little bit better. And that's just one little effect that you can do. There is others that I did here. I was just playing around more with the A in this one over here. And with this one, I was playing around with the distort and transform effect. It's quite a fascinating and fun technique to try. Let's choose our type tool. And again, Laura Mipson pops up. We're in the season of autumn, so why not increase this by holding down shift. This is still a font. We're not going to mess with the font. We're only going to give it that blend option from before. So that swatch that we created before, we're going to apply that here. And as you can see, it does something quite fun and fascinating to this. Let's copy this one. Let's reflect it. Object, transform, reflect. Let's reflect it vertically and see what happens here. Drag and drop it into the swatches panel. Select our text. Select that. Okay. We can even make this oblong instead. Select the text. Select the oblong one. What if we made it smaller? Just making slight adjustments. Oh, okay. There you go. If you make it smaller, it kind of looks like it has 
diamonds in it. It's quite cute. Now that we have our highly decorated text, now we're going to choose Effect, Distort, and Transform, and then we're going to choose Transform, and a pop-up window does appear for us. We can make some really cool selections with this. There's many different options within the Transform Effect toolbar, so let's move this vertically. Choose uh, the number of copies we want. I think I chose three. Let's choose our base down here. That's where it will move. I'm going to move it vertically. And then you start to see some things happening. I'm going to move this all the way out. I think instead of three, I'll do two copies. For the scale, I'm going to decrease the vertical scale. Kind of looks like it just came up from the ground. So I have my vertical scale at 56% and my vertical move at 0.1667 inches with three copies. I'm going to press OK. And then that is what we end up with. Very, very cool. Select this with the selection tool. Control C, Control F or Command C, Command F. Pull it down here and choose Object, Transform, Reflect. I'm going to reflect it on the horizontal axis. Press Okay, the same thing again, but instead of reflecting on the horizontal axis, I'm going to reflect it on the vertical and press OK. And so we have something that looks like this. I'm just going to drag it over here. You actually want it to come up from the bottom of the text to go towards this up here. So we're going to go into our properties panel, which are these three sliding bars over here. In the appearance panel under opacity, it says transform as an effect. You can click on that and it'll open up the transform effect window for you so you don't have to go back and apply a new effect. We want to change the vertical move. There we go, because they were all touching. Keep everything else the same. But instead of the vertical being at 0.1667 inches, it's going to now be at negative 0.1667 inches. Press OK. And then we have the exact same thing reflected on both sides. I'm going to do this next, and that's going to be vibes. Because, you know, autumn vibes. It's autumn. This is a new font, so I'm going to choose my type tool. It's also right here in the left-hand toolbar. I'm going to select over here. It uses the same fonts that we have been using, but I'm going to do Vibes, choose a different text. If you guys don't have these fonts, that's okay. You can use any replacement font. I'm merely pairing a scripted font with a sans serif font, or you can use slab serif if you want. The one that I chose, let's go to this one. I believe it was, was it this one, but was it just black? Yeah, okay, Filson Soft. And I chose the black option for the font itself. I'm going to put this right in the middle. Choose the fall swatch color that we had there. I could have just kept it like this, connecting the two. Instead of keeping it that way, I ended up doing another technique that I'm going to show you over here. So let's Control C, Control F, or Command C, Command F this. A simple blend. Duplicate the word vibes. Bring it down here and chose the dark swatch from my swatches panel. And we're going to select both of these, go to object, blend, make. Now that did something really, really cool. But I went back into my blend options and I did specified steps just like so. Now you're probably thinking like, wait a second, this doesn't look anything like that. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> We're going to fix it. Go into our layers panel. Well, the top blend is this one. Expand that. And remember when I said over here that you can take the A and pull it up as the top layer in the blend? We're going to do the same thing here. So let's select this one by um, choosing the selection over here. And we're going to pull this layer up to the top. And so it reorders the stacking order of these. And so we get something that kind of looks like this. You can always go back in, change the blend options. Let's try three. I'm also going to select the bottom text here, vibes, the dark one. Move it up slightly. Let's move it up to about, about there. And for the top one, I'm going to give it a stroke because it 
is not standing out as much as I want it to. So in the properties panel, select the null stroke color. I'm gonna give it the dark color that I have here. There we go. I think I did a lot more than three. Let's do 10. There we go, we did 10. And you get something that kind of looks like this. Instead of having this one there, you can just replace it with this one. You get lots of different types of text effects here. Even do this and take this further, which I definitely did, down here. I used the same exact effects and blend options for each one of these, and I just ended up changing the direction of them and the colors. I even messed around a little bit with the gradients in the background as well. Let me show you guys really quickly how to do this. It's gonna be the exact same thing that we did earlier, same process. Select anywhere on the artboard with the type tool. I'm just gonna type bottom. <laughs> Let's just make it white. Go to properties panel, choose the fill color of white. Let's give it a stroke color so you can see it. Of like that dark burnt orange color. You can't even see the stroke. 0.03, eh, 0.04. There we go. Let's make it, let's make it pop. Duplicate it, pull it down. I'm gonna reverse the colors on that. Let's choose both of these. Again, the same technique. Go to Object, Blend, Make, and it creates something like this. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, again, this is in the reverse order. So what we wanna do is select this, go into our Layers panel, expand the Blend, and let's select this bottom one here drag it up to the top and it reverses the order so it's actually the order it's supposed to be in. Now you can always select this bottom one with the direct selection tool, move it however you wanna move it. Look at that, look how cool this is. This would be such a fun thing to animate. All my uh, peeps in After Effects, you guys should totally animate this. This would be really fun if you want to, of course, but this is quite fun. I'm gonna do it a little bit different. Let's do it, let's do it this way. And then I also did vibes in the same way. Is anyone getting sick of that word now? Just thought I'd ask. Let's go to swatches, make the fill color white and the stroke color, that dark color again. Same thing. So you can have it stacked this way or you can even stack it this way. Select this bottom one, match it up. So you can have it stacked like this or stacked like that. It looks really quite cool, I think. You know what, since we're doing this together, let's get rid of that one. Let's choose a square tool. Let's make a square here. You don't have to constrain it. I'm going to transform it. There's a panel up here in the top toolbar where you can hit transform. You can make it the exact dimensions that you need it. We can make this just very simple solid color in the back, or we can take the whole thing we can duplicate it, bring it over here, and we can do a gradient for this one. So let's choose a gradient. I had a gradient already set, but it's using the same dark color that we had, a mid-tone color, and then white. And then we can change the angle of this. Let's do 45. Let's do a negative 45. That looks cool, all right. You can even do something like that and it makes it look really fun. And you guys can mess around with the colors and with the orientation. As you can see up here, I chose the opposite color of blue because there's complementary and analogous. I chose complementary blue color for these. Had it set up all nice and aesthetic-like over here, especially with this one. I really enjoy this one. I just did the same thing. So let's go over here, let's take our eight by 10, I just press Control C, Control V, flipped it. Let's change this to negative 45. Instead of it being brown, I made it light blue. I think I'll keep the white. And then with Autumn Vibes, and you can do this like together. So let me show you how to do it together when it's just one whole phrase like this. Autumn Vibes. Let's make this, um, instead of an eight by 10, let's make it 11 or 12 by 14. There we go. Bring this in place. 
Let's make it white. Let's choose our stroke color. Let's go to our swatches panel. Let's choose our stroke color as the light blue. 0 0.04 for the stroke. Weight, control C, control F. Bring it all the way down to the bottom. And instead of the fill being white, it's going to then be that dark blue. Again, you can choose any colors you wish. Choose both of these. Go to object, same process, go to blend make and it made it look how cool that is okay you can get a lot of different fun visuals when it comes to messing around playing around with these you can even make this a gradient as well let's change it up shall we you can even change the stroke color on this one too so these are just really, really simple techniques that you can do. You can even do the transform effect on these as well if you would like to. Um, it's quite handy. Or you can just use blends. Blend options really make this super, super easy. And you can change up however you want them to look. You can even do the same technique that we did up here for this one for Autumn Vibes. Select this one, duplicate it. I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. Well, let's just do five copies. Switch the vertical move to quite a few. Look at that. That's so cool looking. You can have them as close or as far away as you want. You can even uh, decrease the scale horizontally to make it look like it's going in the distance. So if you guys remember Star Trek, the um, text effect at the, at the credits, or if you ever watch old cartoons where it goes in a universe far, far away and it just like keeps going, keeps going. This is that effect that they used. So this is really quite cool. I'm going to keep it like that. That's really cool. So there's lots of different things that you guys can do. So I really like what we landed on with the with this whole thing here. And I think they're really quite cool. What do you guys think? Go ahead and feel free to try out all of these yourself. Let me know down below which one was your favorite uh, if you have one. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. There's going to be a lot more Illustrator and Photoshop videos coming your way. My blog channel and my Patreon are always linked down in the description for you guys if you want to see what I get up to day to day and how I am exploring finding my personal style with digital painting. I will see you all in the next video. See you soon, creatives.